Detention does not have any positive impact on individuals. Detention destroys people mentally. The long-term impact of detention are depression, low self-esteem, continuous stress, fear, poor health. Detention will never have any positive impact. Therefore, detention centers should close down. I was in Yarlswood Detention Center in 2014. It was hard, sad and difficult time of my life. I suffered every passing day in the hands of Home Office Rigid System. I just want to do this video so that there may be a change to the way Home Office enforcement are carrying justice to people who come into the country illegally. It is horrible to stay in detention center. Very, very horrible. I arrived to United Kingdom um, in March 2020. This nightmare is still running after me. I'm a migrant. I'm running from a war. It's hard. What I just wish from the detention to not detain any migrant enough what he leave enough is coming here to search for a safety for a stable life to me um, i would say detention in uk is a it's just a frustration you don't have a conditional release date your freedom is taken away from you and you are banged up total banged up same as prison I want to make a short video about my experience in the United Kingdom in detention center. I was there for three and a half years. Detention is a concrete jungle. It's easy to find your way in. It's hard to find your way out. The biggest things about the UK immigration detention system is that so few of the general public know about the situation. If you've ever been to Gatwick Airport and perhaps taken a plane when you're going on holiday from Gatwick Airport, you've probably seen the detention centres without even realising it. I visited several different people in detention and their stories of how they came to be in detention are all unique and individual, just like the people that we visit. There's not just one way and one route into detention. There's many different routes. For eight years, I visited Brookhouse Detention Centre regularly. Each week, I'd spend an hour or so with one of the 400 men detained there. I had little to offer, but I had time and a listening ear. I did lots of listening and I heard a lot of stories from people of many different backgrounds and circumstances. Sometimes on an initial visit, I'd be told about the first day of detention. Men would have been brought from a port, a prison, a police station, and others from their own beds at dawn. Some understood why they were being detained and others had absolutely no idea. Time and again, I heard about their bewilderment and disorientation on arrival. But at that point, many were expectant and hopeful. They would be bound to have a just hearing in England. Station centre is like a prison. Eating someone in detention make situation was difficult even though some people try to harm themselves because they don't know when they will get released from detention detention center is basically is just place for punishment for the asylum seekers it's a room and uh, it's a toilet inside and uh, even the bed is made from the concrete and uh, t your toilet inside and the, your bed is also from the concrete and even you know allowed to take your shoes inside and it's the floor is very very cold also and uh, 
and you have is the room is basically doesn't have any window and uh, also have light on the top is light is just like 24 hour it's just like top of your head and you don't have switch to turn off and also have like a big camera and uh, yeah and uh, on the door is just have like tiny window on the door and someone come and just open like this and see you and then again shut back absolutely it was crazy 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 um i spent eight months in brook house it was such a horrible experience uh it messed me up mentally physically you know um emotionally you know you just because you don't know what's happening day in and day out you know you're just there and aimlessly basically you know eight months is a long time i always go into play suicide because I feel less of a human being, you know, you just feel like, you know, what's the difference between me and other human beings? Um, why am I in this situation? And um, I wouldn't wish it even on my worst enemy. Well, even though I've been visiting for a long time, I still find it hmm, intimidating. One of the things that's perhaps most distressing is when you go in is that you only go in as yourself. You can't take anything in. You can't take a book in. You can't take... A game, you can't take something to discuss. When you go in, you can only carry what you've got in your head. Well, a detention centre is a prison, basically, because uh, when I've been working, I have um, visited five different prisons in the south of England. Category A, Category B, women's, open prisons, and then Tinsley House and Brook House. And to my mind, there is no difference between the immigration removal centres and a prison. They look like a prison, they feel like a prison, and so to my mind they are a prison, except that the people who are in there are not prisoners, they're detainees. And that is, the, to me, a fundamental problem with detention. And I know many people who are detained are very concerned and unhappy about the fact that uh, somebody is making money out of um, their detention. My life after detention centre, trying to get myself back. I'm still on medication. I suffer from mental distress. It's gone worse. I'm out. I am still in. It's hard to understand. Picture yourself afraid to lock the door behind you. Imagine yourself always looking at the door to make sure it's open, not locked. It's like my life is stuck in the dark. One, I lost my hope and I don't know what I am again because if because I apply to work and they have arrested me illegally. I know not even work. And I have, sent, I have been sentenced 14 months, finish the 14 months, come again for 17 months. You can see the psychological, the trauma, the torture of the mind. They torture me, really. I am not myself again. How I think, how sharp I was, how intelligent I am, it has effect in me. Now, I cannot even remember some things. I can forget easily. I can hear voices even because I ask myself, even if when I'm running from people to kill me and I've come here, they have tortured me physically, mentally, and even spiritually. Thinking about hopes for the future and the differences we'd like the walking inquiry to make, I think the walking inquiry allows us to imagine what refugee tales might be like if no one ever had to pass through detention again in order to find it and how the community might feel, how walking might feel, how storytelling might feel, how it will feel when no one has to share their story 
in order to advocate for change or for fundamental human rights, but simply to connect with someone else whilst walking together in a future without detention. That's what I hope for.